I'll talk a little bit more about maybe my philosophy with ship selection in Romulans. I like picking maybe two big ships for Romulans, whether that's two Dideradicks, a Dideradix and a Valdor, a, a couple of Reman warbirds. We haven't even talked about the scimitar. Ooh. How are we this yeah, far into the episode? We haven't mentioned the scimitar. The uh, easiest way to build to win with a Romulan is you just build the scimitar, and that's pretty much it. Or, and then you can or just like three win. Reman warbirds. Yeah, it's kind of what makes me. It's kind of the sad part about the Romulan faction is like they've got all these options, but they they don't have them fleshed out. So if you want to choose, you know, let's build a big, dangerous Romulan ship. You're inevitably pigeonholed into just flying the scimitar. It gets a uh-huh. bit boring. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, back back to what you were saying though about your your you build with the, you pick two big ones. Yeah, or maybe three. Um, depends on your point levels. Uh, but you you pick a few big ships. You bring a smaller ship for support. Whether Can that's a, a a D seven that is technically a smaller ship. At this point, whether it's a, a scout vessel or a science vessel, um, person. What about a Romulan drone ship? Those guys are like dogfighters. I they're, do they're, love their my stat drone box ship. Three, three, three. I really do love the prototype. I, I, what I struggle with. See, I love prototype zero one more than zero two. I wish one had gotten the discount. And I feel like if they had done it now, they would have given us a card for one in with two in that card pack, and it would have made me so much happier. But well, I mean, I mean, you had to get prototype one. Oh, you mean like a reprint with a better ability? No, it's even just the same ability, just reprint the card, the named ship well, card at the lower point cost. Y- y- oh, at the lower point cost. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's it. All right, I get because you, you have to have the, prototype the, one in order to fly prototype two because yes. the way the card packs worked. Yeah. No, I understand that. Yeah. Um, prototype one was twenty four points. Prototype two was nineteen. Yeah, and that's that's a big discount, and I love the discount. But really, what I end up doing is I I'll stick Donatra on you know my my six point science vessel, or if I'm feeling like you know really protecting things, uh, like a Mirox science vessel for ten points. And leave Ooh, that thing is... cloaked for the whole game and never take a shot. And, you know, use Mirok Science Vessel as an action to repair a shield or hole on target ships. And Denatra's really playing a support role. Yeah, I love Mirok Science Vessel. It's uh-huh. one of my favorites. Um, it's one of the, like, two... Well, prior to recent... Yeah, it was. it's one of the two medic ships in the game. Yeah, I still can't believe that they didn't give the the actual medical freighter a the, healing ability. The pasture, like, yeah. I my know. gosh, the, that... oh, they they need to re-release if they do a um if All they do a faction pack or even a um what was it lower decks faction pack? Oh, they yeah. can reuse that model because that was the I was remembering the name. It's like the Quato or. It was it was the na- ship that Mariner was on before the Cerritos. Okay. Um. Yeah, that was a medical ship. Okay. That I mean, hey, anything to get another pasture in the game. That would be nice. Yeah. Or Olympic class. Yes, Olympic class. So. I could tell you a story about why it looks the way it does. Um, do you know why the why it looks so different from regular Star Trek ships? I'm guessing it was um. Maybe a kit bash model and being set up for a different show or movie. It wasn't made by the people who work at Star Trek. Uh, what happened okay. was uh, it was made by a fan okay. of Star Trek who was friends with somebody who worked on the show. And when they needed to make the last episode of The Next Generation, they were like, hey, we need a ship model really quick. Uh, do you want to, like, I don't know, reuse the Excelsior for the 100th time? And one of the guys on set was like, I have a buddy who made a two-scale model of a Star his 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 reimagining of <laughs> of like the enterprise in like the original sketches so it had like the big spherical dome and they're like okay we'll use his model and they uh 
because it's. Better I don't know if the part about the Excelsior was true, but so they just used this this fan's model um, for the episode, and that's why it doesn't quite match the normal Star Trek aesthetic. It but works, it was like though. a fully rigged, set ready model. <laughs> Can you imagine that happening today? Like no, I mean it. Almost, it kind of did happen with with Picard season two, didn't they? Take Star Trek Online models and import it for the opening scene. Maybe. But I think that was yeah. planned. <laughs> yes, but like the idea that it wasn't ma- – the models weren't originally designed for the show. Yes. Um, or I guess technically this model was designed for the show. But um, well, yeah. With hope, and, yeah. And speaking of models designed for the show, uh, there was an episode of Voyager where they used a Romulan science vessel, painted it orange, and flew it around backwards. Yeah. <laughs> I did see that. And that brings us back to the science vessel. Ha ha! It was all a planned arc. There was always a plan. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, so the science vessels, y- you get bits and nuggets here. That, that's, that's just how this all happens. I think the, the science vessels, right, your, your Talvath, your Apnex, these are, are are ships that you gotta you gotta maybe experiment with. Um, like the Talvath has this weird ability, um, where you're essentially gambling. It's an action if oh, you are right. within range one to three of at least one enemy ship. Roll three defense dice for every evade result you roll. You get an evade token. So you yeah, might get I'd... one, you might get two, you might get three if you're super lucky, or you might get zero. Yeah, this is up there with the Doctor and Blood Oath. Uh-huh. I love my gambling cards. Uh, I, I Every once in a while, I create a gambler build, mm. and then I don't actually bother running it because they are, for one, they're very unpopular in, I think, competitive, but they're, they're a joy to play. Yeah. Um. Because it's like, you never know what's going to (laughs) happen. The nice thing about the Talveth is that it has three tech slots. Yes, there are very few ships that have three tech slots. Uh, Ironically, I think the Romulan drone ship does, or at least one of them does. Uh, It should. There's, um, I think there... Yeah, they both do. There might be a... Is there a Zindi ship with three, or is it two? I don't recall. I know Dauntless has four. Yeah, Dauntless is the is the king and queen of tech. Yeah, throw on a uh, a cargo hold, repurpose cargo hold as your captain because of its named ability, uh-huh. and then you get yourself uh, a fifth tech slot, uh-huh. and then oh, you can just good. fill it up with uh, the mines we will speak of soon. I soon. assume. Yeah, actually, soon. that's. We'll, we'll, I think we should save the best for last. <laughs> I mean, I'm willing to go there right now. How how do you deal okay. with that? How do you build Romulans? Well, really, now, I, I think it's cloaked minds because yes, <laughs> as, as we've been talking about with Romulans, I think in anything you do to compensate for their lower attack dice, you need to build the card that uh, the designer apologized for. So, so there is a funny story. Well, maybe not funny. There's a story about cloaked minds. Ooh, um, hit me with that. So, so I got to talk to Andrew Parks. He, he was the original designer of Attack Wing. He's since departed and moved on to other projects. But he designed the, the starter set and many of the first, um, first waves of expansions. Well, they had the mine token from the, the starter for antimatter mines. And WizKids came back to him and said, hey, you got this token. Uh, we want another use for it. So he built cloaked mines, and and, uh, and he then he realized what that did. Fairmounts turned this into a unique card, I believe. Right? Oh yeah. For a while it was ship unique, and then it be, you guys made it into a unique, unique. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. This is this is a this is a beautiful card. For those who don't know, essentially it places a turret on the board. That automatically fires at any enemy ships that get mm-hmm. near it. Mm-hmm. And it's not a, if you overlap, it attacks. It's a, if you get near it within range one. And it's just, it's so, so good. And you can deploy as many of them as you want during the planning phase. So you can load the Talvath up with three of these, 
fly it into the middle of the game board, if you're flying faster than the enemy, and then just dump all three of them out there. Yeah. Now, you don't want them to get too close, though, because if their radiuses intersect, then they count as one minefield. Um, and so you don't get your double attack. You just get one. But yeah. the point is, though, is if you want to have a use for those science vessels, aside from just support ships, you load them up with mines. Because the one thing better than being able to cloak and attack your enemy is being able to attack your enemy without even using a ship. Uh-huh. Yeah, while well, you're in one corner of the map, uh, your mines are attacking them on the other side. And... and- it's not necessarily even that cloaked mines are doing a bunch of damage. It's that the mines are acting as a deterrent for your opponent to even fly near them. Because uh-huh. you can I, control the, the path of battle, which if if the game becomes more about flight, I think we're going to see, see um, cloaked mines in the unrestricted metas coming out more because yes. it punishes it punishes flying all over the board well uh <laughs> and look at what's happened with um with the maquis getting their extra movement tricks now the romulans have all kinds of extra movement tricks Ooh. extra echo tricks i'm excited I, for that i i mean don't get me wrong i love the tricks but at some point you, we have to talk about counterplay and we're, we're gonna get there do you but, think that the uh that the Tholians will ever be useful at stopping the additional movement people? Uh, not as they are. <laughs> Did I use Tholians and useful in the same sentence? I'm sorry. Uh, without using the word not? <laughs> um, honestly, here, Tholians need more. Oh, yeah. they we If, if Whiskits was allowed to release a card pack for the Tholians, I would want them to. Which... Look, if they if they have a better partnership with Star Trek Online, if the fans of Attack Wing choose to support and embrace what Star Trek Online has, the story that they've gone down in that that way, then I think that there is potential for it. Oh yeah, because there's all sorts of crazy Tholian ships and exactly, and Star I'm Trek okay Online. with. With getting crazy ships, I really don't care. I may not love them, but I'll take them. Bite the bullet and do the X-Wing thing. Go into the books. Actually, yeah, the 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 new Federation pack is all about the books. But like Yeah. Oh my gosh. The amount of the amount of legend space ships that were brought into the X Wing franchise. Yeah. Um to to imagine if, if Star Trek Attack Wing started reaching into the games. And, like, I, you get your Borg probes. You Actually, would. the Borg probe a- appeared in Voyager. Yes. I just think of it as a Star Trek Online ship because you see it in Star Trek Online all the time as a low level enemy. Um, uh-huh. Well, but yeah. Yeah. And, and, I mean, hey, that's a discussion for another day. Absolutely. But uh, I think we we're on the subject of building, right? Building, <laughs> building for Romulans. I, I, yeah. I, I mean, so, we're going to get mines. more into the tech at the end of this. Um, but there's a mm-hmm. lot of good tech. Uh, yeah. So, uh, the way I build for Romulan, I typically will pick one to Daredex, um, because the Daredex are kind of your meat and potatoes of the Romulans. I won't usually pick the Scimitar, because to me it's, it's too easy of a pick. Oh, it's kind of like Picard 9. It's like, well, I mean, of course you'd pick Picard 9. So, um, I, uh, with the Romulans, I typically will go with um, a Dederodex, and then I might run two Dederodexes, depending on whether on the point size or whether I'm using the 50-point cap. Okay. Um, if I'm playing sort of more competitive, I'm going to be definitely running the Talon. Lars is going to be there somewhere, and I'm probably, again, going to have Miroc flying about healing people okay or i might never actually use this ability but it's nice to know it's there it is uh i usually would put uh somewhere on one of my ships i'd throw down the oh the other thing i'd be using advanced cloaking the old advanced cloaking there's also the um i can't ever remember its name because there's so many disruptor pulse beam bombardment but it, it's the old romulan card which lets you attack everyone in your forward firing arc Okay, that's one of the disruptor... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, 
Oh shit! I'll get there. Um, it's uh, it's basically like a torpedo fuselage, but like a diet tor- torpedo fuselage, because it just uh, disruptor pulse. Pulse. Okay. Pulse. Um, because it it hits everyone, but it's only a three dice attack. But uh-huh. it's a disable to use the weapon. And not and a like, discard. Yeah. It it's the it's a yeah no it's not a discard it's just to disable this weapon and then you attack everyone. That's that has its purpose. Absolutely. It came with the Hakona, I think. And it, it's not even unique. Um, Hakona here we Mata. Go. It, it's a 5.3 range 1 to 2. Um, disable this card to perform this attack. During the declared target step, target every enemy ship that is in your forward firing arc within range and perform a separate attack against each ship uh, of each target sh- um Against each of the target ships with this attack, it's plus five SP for a non-Remulan ship. I like it. Um, I think there's a new version of it. Yeah, there's a new version now in the Talosia par- pack, which is uh, pretty much the same, but it's two time tokens. And it's three points and plus three for a non-Romulan ship. That seems better. Uh, so this is the card you'd break out if you wanted to fight someone who had a, a Romulan scout swarm. Mm. Um, and I, although I've heard people say, like, you know, oh, this isn't useful for pretty much anything, I'm like, I think it has its place in fighting, like, if you had loaded up a bunch of ships with these and you shot at a Borel swarm, you might be able to destroy a couple of them, or at least cut them down to half health by the end of the... by a round or two. Yeah, I, it depends on how good their defensive quality is. Right? Yeah, if, that's the if problem. they're running if naked they're cloaked, dice, then yeah, you can probably get through. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this, because I think you play Dideridix more than I do. Do you run additional weapons array on them? Um, oops, I accidentally tried to save a document here. Sorry. <laughs> that's Screen's the filled. it's the so. um one per ship when I know. attacking it ro- rolls one uh, plus one attack die the Derridix class only. Yes. I do. Um I also sometimes will run the mirror universe equivalent which when you put it on a Derridix ship costs the same amount. Uh what was its name? It came with the Tyric. Yeah, I'm I'm looking that up. Easiest way to find it is you go to uh the mirror universe faction only and then additional you just type phaser array dd yeah so with that one it's 2 sp but you have to pay a, a 1 point faction Fact. penalty yeah. to put on romulan but it does the same thing as additional weapons array and when you put it on a romulan ship it just becomes the same price so you get essentially for i think 6 points a plus 2 your to your primary weapon mm mm-hmm. mhm And then you throw Sakona on there, and really it's only two points plus Sakona's oh, cost for. I forget about Sakona. Um, I mean, th- granted, that's it's independent, and now we're really faction mixing, and yeah, I mean, it's how crazy do you want to get? Here we go, additional phaser away. Yeah, um, it's it's a pretty useless weapon for the um, mirror universe faction. <laughs> Because there's only one to Daredex, two if you count the generic. Yeah. But uh, I love it for Romulans. To me, it was more of a Romulan card than it will ever be a Mirror Universe card. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if you throw that on your um, Avatar of Tomed or a generic Borg one, you're now rolling seven attack dice. Uh-huh. And if you bring in forward and- Disruptor Banks, if you do a two or three bank, you get an extra attack die. You've capped out on Rule of Three... But you've added three dice to a Romulan ship. Yeah, and there's three text, the three weapon slots on the Avatar of Tomed, so it'll work. Um, even I don't know if there is on the generic though. And and here's uh, what's cool: the additional weapons array and the four disruptor banks. They simply say, okay, plus one attack die this game round on the four disruptor banks. But additional weapons array when attacking, roll plus one attack die. That plus your um, disruptor pulse. Now you're at four dice, because additional weapons oh, array doesn't say primary weapon. 
See, that's something I've been confused about is um, whether a card lets you do it for one round, like one attack for the round or all attacks. Yeah, so this game bit, round, um, that's your phrase. Game round is one time. The win attacking in bold, that's every time. Oh, okay. So round is once and when attacking bold is every time? Yep. Cool. So additional right, weapons array is definitely worth the, the price of admission, especially if you're going to roll something like Disruptor Pulse that lets you fire over and over and over again. Oh. Granted, it's eight points, but then you're rolling four dice against everything. Yep. The other thing I'll do is I'll usually try to carry one Cloak Mine. Um, mm -hmm. Not typically two, because I don't want to make the opposing player never want to play with me again. Yeah. Um, and that's how I typically build Romulan. <laughs> I get it. A, a solid way to do it. Yeah, and when I play them, I typically will rely on the advanced um, cloaking. So I'll be taking a lot of green moves, but I'll get to stay cloaked. Yeah. Um, unless I fire off that fancy uh, pulse weapon, because I wouldn't be able to re-cloak every time I launched an attack. Funnily enough, I have a hard time lining up that weapon to be useful. I probably should work on my flying a bit. <laughs> it never hurts. I rely too much on cards, which give me additional moves. That When I set down to one move, I don't know what to do. All right. So uh, that's how, how we build for them. Um, now the question of how do we beat them? So... Here's my number one way to beat Romulans if I know I'm going to play against them. I use their own crew against them. Nanclus. Action, discard this card, target an opposing ship at range one to three. This game around the target ship rolls plus one attack die this round, but cannot roll defense dice. Oh, yes. I love Nanclus. I think I was one of the people who sort of started telling people to bring them back into the meta. Because so, I was like, wait a minute. Why is this? Why is no one flying Nancalus? You can just cut through all the defense dice. So those six <laughs> defense dice that Romulans are running? No, they get nothing. They're cloaked. They might still survive the shot the first time. Um, mm -hmm. but I mean, you'll have to get Nancalus back. But there are ways to do that. Um, also, if you have low captain skill, you can run projected stasis field and disable the Romulan ship, the, the shields of the Romulan ship, before they can cloak. So now you're preventing them from cloaking because they don't have any active shields. So that Klingon card, Projected Stasis Field, is going to knock out their ability to cloak, which typically will prevent a lot of their combos and limit their potential of defensive abilities and offensive abilities mm -hmm. just just ideas um the other thing yeah don't let them cloak yeah basically... uh, ram them if you have to to make it so they don't get their uh action mm -hmm. like put park yourself in front of a if you park yourself in front of a well like tricked out um Dideridex, um sure you're gonna get blasted by that Dideridex, but they'll bump into you and then they'll lose their action, and then they'll just be a sitting duck for your other ships. Mm -hmm. I think I've used that that strategy on someone before. <laughs> the blocker, the old blocker strategy, was really popular in the X Wing game. Not so much here. No, because less ships, typically. Uh, also, less less large based ships in Sta. X Wing's too. filled with them, and they always are tanky. So you just park them in the middle. They often have a stationary move too. So you can just park them there and let people smash into them. Uh, if you try that in Sta, you'll just get blown up, which is why you use a scout ship or a science vessel in order to ram or yeah. something real big like a tactical cube. Uh-huh. I wish we yeah, had let more them bump into ships. I, I think that you know things like the Scimitar should be on a large base. But... Mm hmm Actually, the, if you look by scale, the Dideridex class itself should be a large base ship. Uh -huh. It's so huge, even compared to, I think, a Galaxy class. Yeah. Even it, a, isn't it supposed to be like three times the size? Yeah. But this uh, Star a long time ago said, we're not going to worry about scale. 
well, because if they did, then w- compared to the shuttlecraft, the board cube would be a a gate a garden shed if you wanted the game to be to scale. Yeah, or the shuttlecraft needs to be the size of a of a pinhead. Another way I would say to to fight um, Romulans is Romulans struggle so much to get a high number of defense dice. Just fly ships that natively have high defense. I mean, high attack dice. Sorry, mm-hmm. I meant to say attack dice. Um, because then you're saving points that the Romulans are already spending just to boost their attack up. Like, yeah. oh, we want to boost our ship's attack dice by two. We got to fork out six points to get, you know, your additional weapons and your additional phaser array. And you, meanwhile, can like run a ship that just rolls five dice, um, and has an, its own abilities and cool stuff. And lots of shields if you're playing feds or something. And you'll have an advantage over the Romulans in that regard. It's just like they're struggling to even roll anywhere near the amount of dice as you are. Yeah. Um, um, one of the other things, high captain skill gives Romulans fits because they're going to do all of their sensor echo shenanigans. And then you get to come in and react to all of that after they've uh, moved. My personal play style is actually typically to use low captain skill so that's kind of a eh for me sure um, and, and, but that's because I, mean, I played against a lot way. of people who had high captain skill the other thing is romulans for their best strategies to work if you see the tabletop meta is so different from the actual physics sorry the virtual tabletop meta is so different from the actual tabletop meta mm-hmm. because in order for the romulans to use their best strategies it requires the player to buy so many copies of the same ships yes. like you want cloaked mines have fun buying 12 copies of the Praetis. um yeah. you want a romulan um science vessel swarm you're going to be forking out a bunch of money for that um unless you're running like a single souped up uh scimitar which is a fair build um you're gonna have to buy all these various different like nancolis that requires buying a prize ship to get him uh, all these things. These so days, it's like yeah. it, to boost up a Romulan fleet with these cards we suggested, like additional phaser array, additional weapons array. Well, one is from a faction pack you can't find, and the other is a mirror universe prize ship. Uh, so the uh, Romulans booster, will be. Maybe, yeah. yeah, sorry, booster. They will be forking out all this money just to make their ships better, whereas you can just grab a bunch of Vorchas or, you know, throw on some Nebula class ships, and you'll be outgunning them. And these are ships that you just already had in your collection. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like it's it's an efficiency both in real world money and in game point values. You gotta outbuild them with efficiency. Run those cheap cards because if you find a cheap way of doing anything, you've already got a leg up over the Romulans. At least pre Tal Shiar pack. For the most part, it still applies. Um, the Tal Shiar pack is trying to fix that a bit, but at the same time, it it's not like you buy one copy of the Tal Shiar pack and it fixes your entire Romulan fleet. No, but it's getting it, close. It's getting close. I, I will um, say that pack has done more to help the Romulan pack than I think any pack did to help its faction short of the Ferengi pack. <laughs> 